I'm AC. Welcome to Bit Seizure. Today we're going to be talking about two unlicensed games from the company HES made for the Australian NES. Now, Nintendo was pretty much on the front foot when it came to unauthorized and unlicensed games. They had a lockout chip, and they also had the Nintendo seal of quality, which basically means that any game that was on the Nintendo, they had to authorize. Didn't mean it was a great game, but it passed Nintendo's standards. Now, these two cartridges here, as I said before, were made by HES, which stands for Home Entertainment Suppliers. Now, the way they work, is they've got a piggyback system on the top here. Now what you do is you get an official Nintendo game. I'm using the Super Mario Brothers Duck Hunt game, because it's the most common. You slot it in the top so it's standing by itself. You put it into your Nintendo, and because it's got kind of a protruding angle, you can still lock the slot when you push it down. Of course, it does kind of look funny with this hanging out the front. Now, both of these cartridges has four games on it. So, let's take a look. Here is the menu screen, and of course it's in a different order than it is on the card itself. By Sachin. Never heard of them. Now here is the penguin... a seal? A sea? Wait, what? Wasn't this called Arctic Adventure? Well, I had a problem with that anyway, because... Well, our little dude is a penguin. And penguins come from the Antarctic, not the Arctic. So, well... This game doesn't bode well. But to be fair, it's not the worst game I've ever played. It's kind of just a simple puzzler where you gotta manipulate the blocks and get the gems there into the igloos. Uh, the red igloo. I guess our penguin friend here is some kind of communist. But who am I to judge? Now, you gotta watch out for these seals because, you know, they look kind of slow and fat, but they're actually quite nimble and fast. They kind of... oh, there, okay, got me. Alright, I'll try and knock this gem into the communist igloo. Play one, not player one? No, I'm not ready. Uh, Alright, run little penguin dude, run! That's it. Kick that gem to... no, hang on, kick it again. And a crappy little sound effect. I've never had the patience to get past the first level, and that was the penguin seal thing. Okay, next we have Math Quiz, once again by Sachin. And an abacus, magic, mathematic? Uh, they're all different than on the cart. But okay, uh, here we go, equation with one unknown. This really isn't a game at all, it's just a math quiz, which is kind of shitty. I can honestly say that since leaving high school, this is the first time I've ever had to try and do this type of equation. And guess what? I can't. I guess parents could be fooled into buying this if they think it's going to be educational, but no kid would ever play this. Oh man, I suck at this. X equals I don't care. Our third foray into the mind blower pack is jackpot for amusement only. I'm not really sure how you can bet on a jackpot game that doesn't give out cash, but anyway. Alright, uh, this is just a slot machine really, and a kind of confusing one at that. You can't really stop it, it's just completely random after you hit the trigger. I suppose this is a good game if you want to get kids to start gambling at a young age. I just like how it's right next to the math quiz. Hey guys, after you finish with your math, you can gamble! And gamble big! With confusing shapes and what look to be half watermelons. And I lost. I always lose at this game. There are no winners. And the last one on the Mind Blower cart is Galactic Crusader. And a butterfly and a witch? But it's called Galactic Crusader. Right. Another Sachin game, player one ready. And... You're a butterfly. What? With that, you're a butterfly in space? That's kind of galactic, I, I guess. And you collect pills, and shoot at small planets and animal larvae? Oh, and when you get hit, you turn into a smaller butterfly, or moth. I would have slapped the Mothra name on this, that probably would have sold more. Yeah, this power-up's kind of cool, um, ah, oh, damn it, this one isn't so cool. This isn't a bad game, but, you know, I don't really get the context of it. But it is the best game on the cart, 
So there you go, Galactic Crusader. Okay, we're on to the total fun pack. First up is Sidewinder. I'll just go for one player here. And hey, this game isn't that bad. It's actually kind of fun. At least compared to, you know, everything on the first card. It's a standard uh, plane based vertical shooter. The enemies are varied enough and it's difficult, but not too difficult. Uh, my only complaint is that the background graphics are a little bit harsh on your eyes and there aren't enough power ups. Although, you know, there are some and they are kind of difficult to get as you can see. It's kind of cool being a helicopter rather than a plane. It does kind of make sense when you're more maneuverable. Your energy is in the form of a number at the bottom left hand side of the screen, which isn't very helpful when you're getting shot at and especially if the background kind of overlaps it. I haven't played too many shooters on the NES. Um, but I have to say this one's all right, I suppose. Not a bad way to start the fun pack. Okay, next up is Othello. Oh, maybe I spoke too soon. This isn't that fun. Well, it looks like Othello is just Othello, even with balloons. If you've never played Othello before, then you are a lucky, lucky person. Primary level one. It's my go, I'll go here and switch that over, and then it's the other person's go, and that balloon is the most interesting thing about this game. It's just Othello. Just, why, what's fun about this? Nothing, that's what. All right, on to the next game. Okay, second to last, we have Duck Maze. Um, well, there you go, you're the duck with an egg. This is stage one, and the idea is to get the egg to the very bottom of the screen. So it's basically a puzzle game. That's uh, not really that bad a game if you're into this sort of thing. Unfortunately, I'm not. All right, so you're the duck, you push the egg, you can kind of dig through the ground underneath, and you don't want to smash that egg. Oh no, you certainly don't want to smash it. Actually, yes, I do. <laughs> Oddly satisfying. Saving the best for last, we have Pac-Man. There we go. Namco Tengen looks almost official. Almost. I gotta say, as far as I know, this is a pretty solid port of Pac-Man. You get the pills, they turn blue, you can munch on them, and the little eyes go back into the center. I'm sure it doesn't look as great as the original arcade, but this is playable and pretty fun, I gotta say. There ain't nothing left to do now, but to try and die. Come here, come on, up you, there we go. And there you have it. Now, let's be honest, those games weren't great, but they were an interesting little piece of Australian NES history. Now, if you're after one of these carts, they're pretty easy to get, I suppose. They're often on eBay, although I honestly don't think why you'd bother unless you're an extreme collector. Anyway, thank you very much for watching Bit Seizure. I'm AC. Oh, Unit 2, I love you so much. Oh, Rainbow Dash, I love you so much too. You're so much better than that Commander Akari.